न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद शालन बेनेडिक्ट Future generations in Sri Lanka are not going to ask politicians what party they belonged to, uh, because frankly, right now it's all a big confusion. But what they will ask is, what did you do when Sri Lanka was sinking? A very good evening and welcome. This is face to face. Uh, we're in discussion today uh, with uh, parliamentarian Dilan Pereira from the Freedom People's Congress. Uh, a very good evening, uh, Mr. Pereira. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, first things first, just to set the record straight and to know, for the general public to know, where you stand exactly. You began as a member of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. You um, contested the election, uh, won the parliamentary ticket under the SLPP, broke away from that government, uh, formed the Freedom People's Congress. But now, you've aligned yourself again with the Samagi Jana Balavegia. Are you a member of the Samagi Jana Balavegia? What, what has really happened here? Well, to make, first of all, to make a short answer, well, I am not a member of Samagi Jana Balavegia and I will not be a member of Samagi Jana Balavegia in the future as well. That I am referring to Samagi Jana Balavegia party. But we are in the process of uh, building a grand alliance led by the Samagi Jana Balavegia. So will be will be will be will be a part of that alliance. Getting back to your earlier question, yes, I contested under the SLPP ticket and won the Badula district. And then, when it came uh, after Daragale, when Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa left, it came to a stage where we had to elect the president inside Parliament to. Continue with the remaining period of Mr. Gotabe Rajapak system. So, since we contested under the SLP picket, as you very correctly said, we thought it fit that it must be somebody from the SLPP who must become the president to carry on Mr. Gotabe Rajapak's remaining period because that is the mandate given by the people. So, what happened was completely, un complete, what happened was completely. Uh, something something un unexpected and completely a thing that never, never happened in the, all over the world. Now, there in, 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 a, in a country all over the world, there are two types of leaders, elected leaders and selected leaders. Elected leaders are people like us who are elected by the people. Selected leaders are people like the government agent, the grammar servers, division secretaries. They are selected leaders and they become leaders in society, in public service due to the expertise in various fields. But here, today we have a president not elected, not selected, but rejected because the president's party got rejected the elections. And but one that, could say that even the SLPP was rejected by way of the Aragale and what transpired in 2022. Yes, but only thing is, for, for that to happen, we must we must have, have an election. Election, have an election. Hmm. So, at that particular election inside Parliament, we members of the SLPP who, who decided to support Honorable Dallas al as our candidate were of the opinion that the remaining period of Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa should be represented by SLPP member of parliament because that is the mandate given by the people. Whereas, majority of the SLPP decided to support Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe who was, who was rejected by the people. But now, Mr. Pereira, um, why all of a sudden, the, not not all of a sudden, really. The, this this political crossovers. We've we've seen this game before, and, and people are very very skeptic about this. Now, uh, we speak about uh, you know better representation, better governance, not good governance, but better governance. True politics uh, to be conducted here in Sri Lanka for the betterment of the country. Now, you obviously uh, are of the position that your move to the SJB led alliance is in the best interest of the country. Uh, was this decision based on the policy of the Samagijana Balavege or the pom policy that they are propounding that would get Sri Lanka out of this mess? Is it based on that? Sharon, uh, you know, as you said, our country is well known for crossovers. But our, cross our crossover was very much different to some of the well known crossovers that you are talking about. Because in most crossovers are where the opposition members cross over to the governing side to accept portfolios and and to accept positions in government. Whereas in our case, we left our portfolios 
and join the opposition. But but one could argue that you didn't really leave your portfolios. Why not? The government uh, of Gotabe Rajpaksa uh, was forced out of power. No, but because uh, people like um, uh, Honorable Dallas Al Hapri, who was a cabinet minister, Honorable DLP, if he had, or Professor DLP, if he had not seconded Dallas's name in parliament when Dallas's name was proposed by Honorable Sajid Premadas to become president, at that time, Professor Piris was the chairman of the SLPP. If he had not done so, today the Prime Minister would have been Mr. Professor J.L. Piris, not Dinesh Kunwal. So, let us not cross so, so, over, so, over so, the similarities. So, I am so just trying to say, uh, well, it is different. Our crossing over is different because we left, I, I was the deputy chief of the governing party, which was equivalent to a state minister's uh, portfolio. Hmm. We all left that and joined because principally we thought that a rejected person by the people should not get elected as president. It, sh it should have been somebody who represents the SLPP because that is the man SLPP is the part that got the mandate. Hmm. Okay, that is why we joined the opposition. Coming back to the, the, your, your, your real question that is well, we have decided to join a, a grand alliance with the SJB. Why? Today in parliament, we have various political parties in the opposition and if you put, if you put together the support to all these political parties, in my opinion, it is about 75 percent of the vote bank. In my opinion, it is about only 25 percent of the vote bank that is with the government that is with Ranil Vikramasinghe plus the Rajapaksa clan that is the government no. 75 percent is in the opposition, but this 75 percent is not in one basket, it is in about 3 or 4 baskets. So, that 75 percent if put together at an election can defeat the hmm. government on the nomination day itself. So, but, but, but since the opposition is divided, our Congress for the past 6 months have been trying to talk to all the political parties, not only the SJB, we spoke to the SJB, spoke to the Jatika Jana Balavega led by Honorable Anuja Sanayaka, spoke to the SLFP, spoke to the Communist Party, spoke to the TNA, spoke to Mr. Manu Ganeshan. Mr. Hakim, we have been speaking to uh, Mr. even Mr. Trampakaranamaka. We have even spoken to the, the Peritogami Pakshe outside parliament, hmm. trying to see whether we can bring about all these people together. Now, you might say that will never happen, but we managed to bring them together just before the local government elections. Ryan Mikramasinghe did not announce local government election and then cancel it. He was not going to announce it at all. But we managed to speak to all these political parties, got them together, one together under one umbrella and we fought together irrespective of, of our differences. So, you are speaking, of the, the speaking of the helicopter party. The, I am speaking of the local government elections that were that were that were announced, nominations were called, but it was cancelled. No? So, so, Mr. Perry, no, when you say, but, when but, you, say but, you brought them together, what do you mean? Who did you bring together yes. and what did you form? Yes. Before the local government elections were announced, you, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you if you go back, you will remember that Ranil Vikramasinghe from earlier said he was not going to have local government elections. So, even the even the even the so-called so -called local government elections that were that the nomination called for, we we are the people who forced him to have their program election. So, you are saying you announced it and collected that, the, the, you gathered the parties together to demand for the election, yes. not to not to form any form of alliance. Yes. So, we thought that particular alliance that we formed to call for an election, local election can be taken forward to form, to, 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 to get into a broader alliance at an, at an future election as well. But, but Mr. That is why we kept on talking to all these parties. Mm. So, some of the parties that we spoke to like the Janata Vimukti Parabunna, Adhujati Jada Malavege, they very warmly welcomed us. And of course, they said, yes, we will fight inside parliament and outside parliament against the government together. But they said that they will never get into an election alliance with any party at this stage. So, so this alliance, this alliances that you are creating is purely for the election? Of course, because it's, 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 it's only at an election that this country is until, until Mr. Gotai Barajabaks was chased off. 
and uh, it is it is only at an election that this country is able to show their protest against the government. But but Mr. Uh, now we are, we are we're expecting we're expecting a difference, and and it's an age-old saying that you can't do the same thing over and over again expecting a different result. Uh, now, you are forming an, uh, an alliance to contest this upcoming election. Uh, the SLPP formed an alliance together with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, the uh, SLPP, uh, Vimal Viravansa's party, Uday Gamampilla's party. An alliance was formed. The government of good governance formed an alliance between the UNP, uh, exactly. a breakaway faction of the SLFP. All of those alliances failed. So, why is this alliance that now you are proposing to form with the Samagi Jana Balavegia any different? Well, as, as uh, I mean, even though you said all of those alliances failed, they failed after forming the government. But if not for forming those alliances, they wouldn't have been able to defeat the existing government. Or if, if not for the fact that all those alliances that you are referring to were formed, they wouldn't have been able to defeat the existing government. But Mr. Pereira, is so, your alliance strong, Mr. Pereira? So, is my so, question, is it, is it strong at the base? Do you have a consensus on at least what, the basic, the basic what, things what, that these what, parties what, are fighting for? What, what, what is, what, what is the, now, now every political party has their own, own, own policies and own, own political principles. Hmm. What, the, what do you mean by an alliance? You mean what we? What you we compromise mean? on your principles. That's right. You compromise on principles. Now say. So have these have I, these compromises I, been been uh, agreed upon between the two parties? That's right. Now that's a good good question. For the past four, four or five months, we have met the SJB leadership about six or seven times, and we have we have, we have managed to sort of not hundred percent compromise, but come to middle ground on so many issues. For instance, I can tell you, uh, Dr. Harsha Silva is the is the economic. Uh, uh, expert in mm. the SJB. Mm. Yes. And the SJB uh, economic principle is on a blueprint, mm. and that is the SJB, uh, SJB uh, policy on, on the economic side. Right. So, you uh, agree to that. that? That is the SJB policy. So, we must, we must not say, no, no, SJB cannot have that policy because we are getting an alliance. SJB can have that policy, we have our own policy, then we get together and see the differences in our policy and their policy and come to middle ground. For example, when the SLFP formed an alliance with the JVP, which was called the UPFA under the Beatle symbol, mm. the SLFP economic principles were very much different to the JVP economic principles. Mm. JVP did not say we are going to withdraw all our principles. SLFP had their principles. We came to the table. I was there with Honorable Mangal Samarvira most of the time when there were discussions. And we managed to find find common ground. Hmm. So alliances are formed for the simple reason all the parties might have differences. But hmm. here, the JVP, the SJV, our Congress, the SLFP, the, the TNA, part of it at least, hmm. uh, the Manoganation's party, Rafaqin's party, they are all in one agreement. But that this government should be defeated. So we are in agreement that this government should be defeated. The government can be defeated only at an election, an election result is counted on arithmetic, not on pure mathematics or prime mathematics. It is on arithmetic, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So, we can have our principles and keep on talking about our principles till dawn in the morning, but the simple reason is at an election the result is counted on arith simple arithmetic and arithmetic means who are trying to bring all the parties against this government together. Uh, Mr. Dilap Pereira, I, I, I understand the, the, the requirement maybe on, on the part of uh, uh, a certain uh, section of this society to defeat this government uh, and of course there are those who support this government and who think that this government uh, is really bringing in change to Sri Lanka. Uh, but besides that point, uh, Mr. Pereira, now you are saying that this alliance is formed to win the election to defeat the government. There are many who would believe that this government is going to be defeated regardless of the formation of any alliances. But this brings me back to my point because at the end of the day, it's not going for the election, winning the election, lighting some crackers and then eating kiribat in the morning because that, that's, that's always what has happened. That's, that's what happened in 2015, that's what happened in 2010, that's what happened in 2019 and today we are here. So my question to you again, okay, let's take for an example uh, an issue that we've been uh, grappling with since the time 
of, uh, of J.R. Jaiwardena, the executive presidency of this country. Now, there are many who believe that the executive presidency is one of the main reasons for the destruction of this country because the executive president is vested with so much power, so much arbitrary power, and because of that arbitrary power, he can manipulate the entire system single-handedly. Best example was given under the presidency of Gotabe Rajapaksa with all the actions that he did. And now parliamentarians are coming out and saying, look, we were in the government, we were helpless. The president took all of these decisions. He was the one who did these things and therefore he must be held responsible. So, Mr. Pereira, at least on this point, what is the stance of the uh, People's Freedom Congress or the faction uh, that you represent who are now planning on forming a coalition with the SJB because the SJB has clearly said that they will get rid of this executive presidency and bring in a parliamentary system. Where do you stand? Well, our, our stand is very clear. We are for the abolition of the executive presidency and uh, we our, our position regarding the abolition of the executive presidency is very similar to the SJB position. The, 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 the areas where there can be certain differences can be the economic policy that of course I must say that when we get into an alliance we must talk and come to middle ground rather than trying to trying to criticize the existing SJB uh, economic policy without having alternatives. I mean I mean I must I must very openly say if a SJB led government is formed the best person to become the finance minister is Dr. Harsha Silva. There is no question about it. That does not mean that I, I wholeheartedly agree with Mr. Harsha Silva's blueprint economic policy. But Mr. Harsha Silva has to right to defend that policy on behalf of the SJB. SJB but the, when the SJB get into an alliance with other parties like how the SLFP and the JVP did, well, we, we might have to talk and come to middle ground and agree on things we can agree to. But if somebody is trying to say just because we do not agree with the SJB economic maestro or Dr. Harishilva economic policy that at a future government that Dr. Harishilva should not be finance minister, I do not agree. I think the best finance minister that the SJB government can have is Dr. Harishilva, nobody else. Uh, people can have dreams, but he is he's, he's, he's the, he's the best person. Of course, when, 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 when an alliance is formed, Dr. Harishilva might also have to compromise on certain principles that he believes in. But now, Mr. Dilan Pereira, the people have lost faith in parliamentarians. Recently speaking, uh, Sarata Munugama, uh, the leader of the party uh, led by or formed rather uh, by a Dilit Javira businessman, he uh, said that 75%, according to the survey that he, they have conducted, 75% of the general public are openly saying that parliament is useless, management is useless, politics in Sri Lanka is useless. So there is a massive breakdown in public trust and I don't, I don't have to give you examples uh, to prove this because it's common knowledge, everybody knows about this. So there is a mismatch between what politicians say and what politicians do. Now we know that this is true across the spectrum but in Sri Lanka especially there is a huge mismatch. So there's a lack of trust and there is a need therefore to build trust. Now Mr. Pereira you said that you uh, and the uh, Freedom People's Congress Packed faction that you represent have wholeheartedly agreed on the abolition or on the abolition of the executive presidency. However, you yourself have voted in favour of the 17th Amendment, the 18th Amendment, the 19th Amendment, the 20th Amendment, and the 21st Amendment. All amendments drastically pulling back on the president's powers and giving the president even more powers, pulling back on the president's powers, giving the president more powers. So it's a tug of war. Now, my point being that when you form alliances like this and, and lead a country like this, there is a huge tug of war pulling this way, pulling that way, with no one having a stable policy, which is why the country is in this position to begin with. So, when you say that you have completely agreed to the abolition of the executive presidency, how can the general public really believe you on that when your actions in the past have proved otherwise? Yes, of course, in the past, sometimes... We also, since the, the president electoral system is a system where the party whip has a lot of say because we come, we contest on a list. Well, sometimes we have followed the party party whip's orders in voting in parliament, hmm. and that doesn't say that we have done the right thing. Hmm. Whenever we have done the wrong thing, well, we we are also responsible for it. But on the, on the twenty first amendment, even though the twenty first amendment was presented to parliament. Soon after we had left the opposition or left the governing party and joined the opposition, 
that is the time that we were very hurt that most of the SLPP MPs did not vote for the SLPP candidate Dallas but voted for Ranil. When the 21st amendment was proposed to parliament, it needed two thirds in parliament. About 20 SLPP government MPs who voted for Ranil Vikramasinghe did not come to parliament on the day of the vote. So, two thirds was given to the government by the opposition, including us. Even though people who voted for Rani did not come on that particular day because they thought that this 21st amendment was uh, mainly to stop Basil Rajapaksa coming to parliament again because it, it had this section on the dual settlement as well. Mm. About 20 Basil Rajapaksa MP did not come to parliament that day. It was us who provided the two thirds to Mr. Rani Vikramasinghe's government when Mr. Vijayadas Rajapaksa presented the 21st amendment. If not for our, our support, it would, have, it would have been passed. So, 21st amendment after Mr. Rajiv Vikramasinghe came into power was, was passed purely on the basis because we and the opposition supported it and gave the two thirds. Two thirds. So, that is one way of showing well we have realized that presidential system should be abolished. We kept the first step by curbing the uh, curbing down and bringing down some of the powers of the president to the 21st amendment even though the governing party did not support and give, give, the, give the two thirds. So, what I am trying to say is if the government is genuinely interested in abolishing the uh, presidency, they must bring in a motion or uh, uh, the, 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 the process to, to, to start the abolition of the presidency in genuinely in doing so. If not, they must not use the executive president the issue only to postpone elections that is that is wrong because as you know the presidential election is due mm. technically end of this year by the by October the new president should be sworn in. Mm. Whereas, the parliament technically their session ends 2025. Mm. So, if the government sincerely wants to abolish the executive presidency, well, let us do it. We will support it. We will we'll give two thirds in parliament, then it can go to a referendum. But at the referendum, the government must say, as soon as the executive presidency is abolished, there will be there will be parliamentary elections for, for the people to decide who is go, who is going to govern this country. Mr. Pereira, we're in the final few minutes of the show, but I, I really want to just pick your mind on this point. What do you genuinely believe in? Because something is uh, important, is as severe or as crucial to the administration of a country such as the form of governance. It's, it's the basic, the cornerstone of Sri Lankan democracy, the form of governance. Is it an executive presidency? Is it a parliamentary system? You cannot have people uh, who would one day come and say a parliamentary system is great and then on the very next day say an executive presidential system is great. So, no, you yourself said that um, there have been times where you have voted in line with the government whip's decision or the party's decision. But what do you genuinely believe in? What have you genuinely believed in? What is the proper system of governance for Sri Lanka, an executive presidency or a parliamentary system? Right now, I believe it's a parliamentary system, of course, but I, I must say. But when you say right now, isn't that what no, 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 starts no, with? No, 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 I want to add something. But it has to be not, not a unicameral system, but a bicameral system. Okay. You know, the, 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 since there was executive presidents who were elected by the people, the minority had the right to uh, have a say in electing the president at a presidential election. So, as soon as the executive president is abolished, the, the, the leverage that the minorities would have had an election will go off. We had a parliamentary election that they, they will not have that much of leverage. So, at the moment we have an executive president system with a unicameral parliament that is one house. Hmm. Uh, if, we, if, we are, if we genuinely want to get, abolish the executive presidency, we must have a bicameral system where the parliament also will be, then there will always be a senate. Then the Senate will replace the executive presidency to do the checks and, checks and the balances. Hmm. And the Senate will comprise, Senate will be elected not purely on the votes by the people, hmm. but also uh, the Senate will allocate uh, various, various communities, various religions, various sections of society, uh, various quotas to hmm. get into Senate. Hmm. They will be elected by the people of course, yes. but then not only, only uh, people's vote, but also uh, the, the representation in the Senate must be in line with 
uh, various uh, various sections of the community, so that there is no uh, there is no unjust yes. and then, uh, treatment of communities. And that Senate but will replace the executive president presidency to do the checks and balances. Mr. Pereira, we are in the final few minutes of the show. If I can just squeeze, squeeze in one more question, Mr. Pereira. Now there is, as I said before, a lack of trust between the general public. Uh, you yourself said that um, there have been certain instances where you had to vote with the decision of the party, uh, but those kind of decisions, those kind of decisions that are uh, not true to the people, that are against the people's interest is one of the main reasons why Sri Lanka is here today and also why parliament or parliamentarians cannot take personal responsibility for the decisions that they have made. So moving forward, Sri Lankan people don't want the old politics that destroyed Sri Lanka. They want a new form of politics, a genuine form of politics. Can you as a parliamentarian right now and a hopeful candidate for the next election ensure that genuineness, that the mistakes of the past will not be repeated uh, going forward? Yes, I think whatever an alliance that we are forming with, with, with whichever the party, in that in that we must we must have our economic and political principles, and in our political principles we must have a section to say that the members who are elected from that particular party will be able to uh, work according to his conscience, and also the cabinet should sign a contract with the president. Whereas the president will give timelines and targets to the cabinet and say this is your target for six, six months, achieve it, otherwise you go home. This is your target for the first one year, achieve it, otherwise you go home. In the same way, all the, all the top officials in ministries, in the public service also should be given targets. We must have a performance based, target oriented promotion scheme for in the public service as well as politicians, otherwise what KPIs. happens? Yes. Key performance indicators, we yes. already have that. Yeah, that, that we have Here it at, in, news in, first. In, at, at News First, you have it in the private sector, but not in the government sector. <laughs> the government sector, if you are senior, you get promoted whether you do, do anything or not. But have <laughs> a, a, a performance based, target oriented uh, promotion scheme in the public sector. And that, when I say public sector, that includes the cabinet and the members of parliament as well. Public representatives as well. well. Hopefully, this uh, concept uh, spills over to local government members and provincial yes, councils yes. as well as and when they are formed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Dilan Pereira. Thank you for having me. For coming on our show and expressing your thoughts so freely. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in to another episode of Face to Face. Of course, the election is coming up. Um, people are closely watching this election uh, because they